The Sharpe Ratio is a measure of risk-adjusted return for a stock or a portfolio. The higher the Sharpe Ratio, the better. Let's look at how the Sharpe Ratio formula actually works. So we have the return of an investment relative to the risk-free rate of return on the numerator. This is referred to as the excess return. Then on the denominator, we have the standard deviation of the investment's return, which is its volatility. By comparing the excess return of the investment to the volatility of the investment, we arrive at the Sharpe Ratio number. Here's an example. Imagine an investment with an expected return of 15% and the risk-free rate is currently 3%. This company has a 12% expected excess return. It also has fairly low volatility of returns, which is a standard deviation of 5%. The sharp ratio for this investment is 2.4. Generally speaking, if you want to have a higher sharp ratio, you want higher expected returns or higher excess expected returns and lower volatility. Those two forces create higher sharp ratios. Now let's look at a grading threshold for the sharp ratio. Here is a scale. Anything less than one is considered bad. And yes, the sharp ratio can go negative if the excess return turns out to be negative. 1 to 1.99 is considered good. From 2 to 3 is considered great, and anything above 3 is excellent. These are just general rules of thumb, and different investors may have their own interpretations, but this is a rough guideline to follow. Let's look at the implications of a Sharpe ratio. You can see the relationship between volatility and return here. The higher the standard deviation of an investment's return, the lower the Sharpe ratio is most likely to be. As the volatility of an investment increases, the expected return must go up exponentially to compensate for that risk. Let's look at an example of a Sharpe ratio for measuring performance. Which manager performed better on a risk-adjusted basis? Fund manager A who earned 20% or fund manager B who earned 30%? Well, by looking at their standard deviations, we can determine their Sharpe ratios. Well, fund manager A had a ratio of 2, and manager B had a ratio of 0 0.5. If we care about risk-adjusted returns, then fund manager A did better. If we don't care about risk-adjusted returns, and only the absolute highest possible return, then we may choose fund manager B. Thank you for joining us for this quick tutorial on the Sharpe ratio.